Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, we thank you for gathering us today on this All University Convocation for this semester, together with the administration, faculty, staff, and students of this university, which marks the opening of the academic year 2021-2022. It is you, our God, who binds us together, you who have called us to be part of this institution, a community that carries the mission and ministry of our Lord Jesus the Christ. As we begin this convocation to continue this university's tradition to orient and inspire newcomers and to remind the continuing students toward our vision and mission as a Christian institution that strives to a whole person education for the well-being of every individual that chose this university to nurture and educate them, we pray for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. As we listen to our dear president and those who are tasked to speak before this august body, grant us listening ears, understanding hearts, and discerning minds, and allow us to experience your presence in today's activity. O Lord, we give you praise for everything that is new and beautiful, for everything which holds promise and brings us joy. O God, you have been our companion since the beginning of time. Bless, we pray, this journey of a new school year that we undertake. Open our eyes to the new challenges and exciting opportunities that this new school year brings, even in the midst of the still persisting pandemic that led us towards innovation of learning and shifting to a new platform through this online distance education. Refresh our souls and renew our spirits, both the administration, faculty, staff, and students, as we embrace the beautiful ministry you have called us to. We welcome those who are new to this community and ask that you strengthen them to share the wonderful gift you have given them. May you guide our students to return with open hearts and minds eager to learn. Be with us, O God, as we spend this moment of being with one another, even through this virtual space. May you continue to confront us at this moment with your claims and challenge us all to become the kind, compassionate, and patient people you intend us to be. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our greatest teacher. Amen. Mayang makiliw, perlas ng silanganan, halab ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiting, sa maglulupig, di ka pa sisihil. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the whole university community, I welcome all new members of the Siliman community, students, faculty, staff, and administrators. This convocation is our convocation for this first semester and give us an opportunity to welcome especially our new first-year students and our fourth-year students who will finish hopefully their baccalaureate, new baccalaureate programs. 
by the end of the school year. This is a tradition inviting you to subscribe to the vision and mission and shared values of this institution, a leading Christian institution committed to total human development for the well-being of society and environment. The values that have shaped this university are vitally present in Silliman today. I hope you will reflect on this vision in the semesters ahead and make it relevant in your learning and actions. I'd like to articulate into what we mean by committed to total human development for the well-being of society and environment. You will become part of a network that includes thousands of alumni scattered in many countries around the world. You'll also form a community with your teachers. You will have the chance to work in close partnership with faculty members. However, the most essential is the bond you will establish with your schoolmates and classmates. You're likely to have friends here that you will call as BFF. You are now a member of the Silliman community. You will forever have a tie to Silliman. I wish that as you make your way through this place and become a worthy member of our community, that you too will find your ways to contribute to our culture of caring in these trying times in our society's life. Please focus on ways to overcome our regional divisions and help heal, heal our environment and practice the Christian tenets of kindness and compassion. I hope that you will meet caring faculty members and students who are convinced and committed to solve the wrongs of our society, and paving the way to a world where everyone is treated with respect and dignity. My dear friends, imagine what we could accomplish in a world populated by caring and compassionate Silimanians. So, a warm welcome to all and I wish you great success at Silliman. I look forward and anticipate to listen how your stories will unfold with us. Daghang salamat. Mariao Mahinaat, Mapia Kapipita, Marhay Naaga, Maupay nga aga, maayong aga, naimbag abigat, magandang umaga, salamat pagi, ohayo, chu na chim, zao siang hao, guten morgen, buongiorno, buenos dias, bonju, hui muere. To all our students from the different parts of the Philippines and around the world, maayong buntag and a pleasant morning to all of you. At this juncture, allow me to introduce to you the members of the University Administration. To begin, our President, Dr. Betty Cernol McCann. Our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Earl Jude Paul L. Cleope. Our Vice President for Finance and Administration, Dr. Jenny L. Chu. Our Vice President for Development, Assistant Professor Jane Annette L. Bellarmino. The members of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Ricardo A. Balbido, Jr., Chairperson, Dr. Angel C. Alcala, Vice Chair, Attorney Fema Cristina P. Saison, Corporate Secretary, Engineer Emmanuel D. Abellanosa, Dr. Epifania D. Anfone, Dr. Marl V. Ferenal, Trustee Maria Elena R. Mangawil, Dr. Evangeline B. Manjares, Attorney May S. Pono, Dr. Agustin A. Pulido, Trustee Keith Arley D. Cabral, Trustee Fenina T. Rodriguez, Trustee Grace A. T. The members of the Dean's Conference, Dr. May Bridget Bernadelle L. Villardon, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Gloria G. Futalan, Dean of the College of Business Administration. Dr. Maria Lorena L. Tubalia, Dean of the College of Engineering and Design. Dr. Gina F. Bunior, 
Dean of the College of Education and Supervising Dean of the School of Basic Education. Assistant Professor Evelyn S. Fajardo, Director of the Institute of Clinical and Laboratory Sciences. Dr. Teresa A. Ginoo, Dean of the College of Nursing. Dr. Lili Ann D. Bautista, Director of the Institute of Rehabilitative Sciences. Dr. Margaret Helen Udarbe Alvarez, Dean of the Graduate Programs. Assistant Professor Joy M. D., OIC Dean, College of Computer Studies. Dr. Walden R. Orsus, Dean of the Medical School. Dr. Elizabeth Susan Vista Suarez, Dean of the College of Performing and Visual Arts. Dr. Ferdinand M. Mangibin, Acting Dean, School of Public Affairs and Governance. Dr. Jose Edwin C. Cobello, Dean of the College of Agriculture. Attorney Miles Nicolas G. Bihar, Dean of the College of Law and Concurrent University General Counsel. Dr. Madeline B. Kiamko, Dean of the College of Mass Communication. Dr. Janet S. Estacion, Director, Institute of Environmental and Marine Sciences. Dr. Jeanette H. Falier, Dean of the Divinity School. Dr. Chuchi S. Montenegro, Director of the School of Agro-Industrial and Technical Education. Dr. Dave E. Marshall, Director, Silliman Online University Learning. Dr. Edna Gladys T. Kalingasyon, Dean of Students. Dr. Beulah Rose Torres, Director of Instruction. Dr. Enrique G. Oracion, Director of Research and Development. Dr. Maria Lourdes E. Orsus, Director for Community Engagement and Service Learning. From the School of Basic Education, Assistant Professor Myla June T. Patron, Associate Dean, School of Basic Education. Assistant Professor Kemons S. Kilat, Principal of the Senior High School. Assistant Professor Idelin A. Balingit, Principal, Junior High School. Mrs. Duby F. Estalio, Principal Elementary School. Assistant Professor Ethel R. Burgos, Principal of the Early Childhood School. The members of the Silliman University Church Team Ministry, Reverend Lenny I. Hovita, Acting Senior Minister and Concurrent Associate Minister for Christian Witness and Service. Reverend January B. Alpuerto, Associate Minister for Christian Education and Nurture. Reverend Wella L. Poile de Rosas, Associate Minister for Campus Chaplaincy and Students. Our various unit heads of support units. Ms. Carol R. Bartolata, University Treasurer. Dr. Giovanni T. Makahi, Register and Admissions Officer. Mrs. Marcia Luz T. Salcedo, Budget Officer. Mrs. June B. Diputado, Chief Accountant. Attorney Edwisa Rosit C. Diocos, Internal Audit Chief. Ms. Milita C. Aguilar, Director, Office of Information and Publications. Engineer Edgar S. Ignalaga, Superintendent of the Buildings and Grounds. Mr. Ruben N. Bukingo, Director for Alumni and External Affairs. Assistant Professor Anna V. A. Riconalia, Manager of the Food and Auxiliary Services. Mrs. Rosalina G. Dinoy, Acting University Librarian. Dr. Maria Cecilia M. Henove, Director of the Instructional Media and Technology Center. Mr. Percival Gerard M. Henove, Director, Management Information Systems. Assistant Professor Dionisio V. Pinheiro II, University Athletics Director. Our sectoral representatives, Assistant Professor Jonathan Mark N. Te, 
President of the SU Faculty Association. Mr. Vicpier S. Kalunsag, President, SU Staff Association. Ms. Maika G. Riambonanza, President of the SU Student Government. And that, my fellow Silimanians, constitutes the members of the university administration and various university sectors. My name is Joshua Francisco J. Ablong, Manager for Human Resource Development. Thank you. Silliman community of learners, good morning. I bring you greetings from the Silliman Board of Trustees 
and the university administration. We are now in an empty, loose auditorium, but our hearts and minds are filled with your presence. It is said that convocation is an academic ceremony to formally welcome incoming students to the university. It brings together administrators, faculty, and students to commemorate the start of the academic year, providing a bookend to commencement. Last school year, we were not prepared to transition into a virtual university convocation as we were orienting ourselves with the new school opening, the celebration of the Founders' Day, and the many details that competed for our attention as we launched our online university learning. This academic year, 2021-22, the Founders' Day event last month served as teaching learning moments about our history as an institution, the tenets and principles we are grounded on, and the strong bond and loyalty created among students and graduates over the period of many years. I have given this presentation the title of COVID, Corals, and Colleges, as I will reflect on three key disruptions that are obtaining as we enter the current school year. First off, we continue to be in a COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, a COVID new reality is that its risk is here to stay for an extended period of time. Our World in Data, a data tracking project by the University of Oxford in England, reported recently that 62.16% of Japanese people were at least partially vaccinated, compared to 61.94% of Americans. In the same data set, the Philippines is reported to have vaccinated 15% of our population, one of the lowest vaccination rates in Asia. Even after getting the shot. Vaccinated persons are facing a disheartening reality. We'll have to live with some level of COVID risk for the foreseeable future. And now we have the Delta variant. So we all have to figure out what is a sustainable and ethical level of risk to incorporate into our day-to-day -day life. Students like most of you who are young and healthy may be low-risk persons. And for your group, this main fear isn't getting the virus. Rather, it is contributing to the spread of the virus among the unvaccinated and the vulnerable. This means that responsible citizenship in the area of health, safety, and security should keep us wondering whether we should dine indoors, keep struggling to make travel plans and taking coronavirus tests, after being in what is perceived to be high-risk situations, or being in quarantine or not leaving home when we are exposed to those who are COVID positive. These are all things we had hoped were behind us after being fully vaccinated, but not yet. 
For the good of all, we must continue to wear face mask and face shield, observe physical distancing, wash hands, and when available, you queue up and submit yourself to vaccination. The safety of one is the safety of all. For this reason, the university has its own vaccination program. Our in-person classes are limited to health-related programs with strict adherence to health safety and security protocols. As certified by the Commission on Higher Education, we have limited face-to-face -face instruction in nursing, physical therapy, medical technology, and medicine. A second disruption is a disaster which we try our best to avert is ecological in nature. The proposal to build artificial islands along the Dumaguete shoreline has been opposed as this will effectively decimate the living ecosystems and marine protected areas for our over 200 species of fish and various marine life habitats on which many households depend on for their source of protein. The campaign against the destruction of the environment is an articulation of the university's vision to be a leading Christian institution committed to total human development for the well-being of the society and the environment. Our concerned academic units are hard at work in sharing science-based data, legal basis, and factual information, and in banking on community partnerships with government agencies, non-government units, church-based groups, and people's organizations. We continue to deal as a university with ways to prevent ecological disaster via information, education, communication, and community engagement strategies. A third disruption is in our very own school or college life. Online learning is here to stay as part of a 21st century education. So what are the characteristics of a 21st century learner? The learner of this 21st century is flexible and adaptive, is a lifelong learner, is technology savvy, is a team leader and collaborator, and is creative and innovative. To what extent are our teachers and students able to meet the required skills in present day education? Our efforts at retooling and upskilling of learners in pace with the demands of online digital learning. Here at Silliman, we instituted a digital learning platform through our Silliman Online University Learning, or SOUL, managed by a full-time officer and staff to respond to those online learning needs. Together with Seoul is our Office of Instruction to assist in aligning learning designs and assessment consistent with the online delivery of learning. Given the fact that we are creatures of habit, our ways of teaching and our ways of learning may have been much influenced by the pre-COVID education scenario. 
face-to-face -face learning, classroom as a static place that we thought could be used forever with the right instructional technologies. But no, we weren't being trained enough on how to manage for change in the classrooms. Rather, we were being trained on how to keep things like they were in the past. That means nearly everyone in one's line of work was caught unprepared for the current reality. We now have a whole profession of people, not just in education, having to shift how we think, feel, and act in our world of work. Thanks to the creativity, resilience, and adaptive capacity of the Silliman Learning Community and the acquisition of tools of information technology, we resolved to learn as we go. And we had to learn fast enough Given the demands of the 21st century education, fueled by new educational technologies, there is clearly a lot more skills to be learned as we face our preferred future in global education. The current situation is teaching us to abandon the concept of forever, and into the concept of changing. The former approach might have been flawed from the beginning anyway. The rule of nature, after all, is change. Now, the impact of the health crisis, the threats of ecological disaster, and changing landscape in education make it clear that change is inevitable in our ways of thinking, in our ways of doing, as persons and as members of this institution. Because of the expectation to adjust and to cope with changes in our workplace, there is a place for a program of care for those who feel isolated or are unable to cope with the rapid changes taking place. We have our online guidance services and counseling programs. Some of our own faculty and staff have instituted an online service to promote mental health. We also encourage our teachers and everyone who extended best efforts at demonstrating a program of care by attending to students who feel lost and are weary in the face of changes perceived to be beyond their personal control. Since January 2020, when the first case of COVID-19 was detected from a tourist from Wuhan who passed by Dumaguete before going to Manila, Silliman University had its own share of darkness associated with the pandemic. But it will not be the full story if we as a university will not share our own share of light, of shining moments and achievements. As Mahatma Gandhi said, in the midst of darkness, light persists. The Commission on Higher Education has given Seliman University the following recognitions. A plaque of exemplary institutional performance as QS World University rankings in Asia 
2020-2021 among the Philippine institutions. A plaque of exemplary leadership, a plaque of institutional excellence as autonomous higher education institution, a plaque of leadership excellence and plaque of program excellence for Silliman University programs awarded as centers of excellence and centers of development. Certificate of Appreciation as a CHED partner for quality assurance in higher education. We are granted a renewal of our autonomous status effective June 1, 2021 to May 31, 2023. We fared well in the league tables, such as placing sixth in the 2021 Philippine University ranking. And we showed good performance in licensure examinations, such as in the recent nurse licensure exams, wherein we have two top notchers, one in fifth place, and another ninth place. The university hosted a number of international events and conferences. We even increased enrollment at the tertiary level. We often cite in our Seliman logo the three words, via veritas vita. In that logo is actually a lighted lamp that is seldom referred to. A lamp that is lit symbolizes that education and the things we do in our respective roles as faculty, students, as staff can bring us out of darkness. In the scars of a pandemic, in the violence against the environment, and in the disruptions occurring in global education. Let us all carry with grace, loyalty, and dignity our brand of lighted lamps to eliminate darkness around us. Let your light so shine before men and women that they may see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Blessings and cheers to us all in this new school year.
May I request those who are able to please stand for our benediction. Sisters and brothers, may our God who alone gives power to the faith and strengthens the powerless, those young men and women who feel weary and exhausted, the God who renews the strength of those who wait for the Lord and enables them to mount up with wings like eagles, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint, the God who became one like us in Jesus, and the God who continues to be with us through the Holy Spirit, bless us. May God himself, the God of peace, bless us and sanctify us through and through. May our spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the one who calls us is gracious and faithful, full of loving mercy, who will always fulfill his covenant promises to his children. May the omnipotent God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit protect us all, keep us safe, and cover us with his wings, now and always. Amen.